Right now on Denver 7 News, the commander in chief battling the coronavirus. He is receiving all of the uh, standard of care and beyond. New details from inside the White House reveal the president was given oxygen before being flown to the hospital. Facing a critical 48 hours, doctors are pinning their hopes on some advanced therapies to help the president beat the virus and bounce back quickly. We hope that we will give his immune system enough of a boost so that he can win this and make a complete recovery. As doctors treat the president, more high-ranking Republicans confirm they tested positive for the virus. It all comes right before contentious nomination hearings to fill an empty Supreme Court seat. Welcome to Denver 7 News, everyone. I'm Jason Grenauer. And I'm Jacqueline Allen. Thank you for joining us for this streaming edition. Today, we are keeping a close watch on our president's health as he battles the coronavirus. The president now says, I feel much better now, and I think I'll be back soon. Those direct quotes from President Trump in a video message released from the hospital just a few minutes ago on Twitter. And the president flew to the hospital yesterday from the White House. Today, you can see supporters gathering outside to wish him a speedy recovery. As Arena Roy reports, attention is now turning to an event at the White House last weekend and the chance that could have spread the virus to dozens of cabinet members as well as high-ranking Republicans. President Trump spent the night at Walter Reed Medical Center where he is receiving treatment after experiencing coronavirus symptoms. Sources close to the president tell ABC News he was having trouble breathing and received supplemental oxygen on Friday, prompting his transfer to the military hospital. Thursday he had a mild cough and some nasal congestion and fatigue all of which are now resolving and improving. His doctor saying he is happy with the president's progress. And the president this morning is not on oxygen, uh, not having difficulty breathing or walking around uh, the White House medical unit upstairs. Amid questions over transparency on when the president was first diagnosed and the severity of his condition, his doctor issuing a memo this afternoon clarifying the timeline, saying he incorrectly used the term 72 hours when he meant day three and 48 hours when he meant day two. On Twitter Saturday afternoon, the president calling the doctors and nurses at Walter Reed amazing, writing, with their help, I'm feeling well. The president first tweeting just after midnight on Friday that he and the first lady had tested positive for COVID-19. That announcement coming just hours after learning Hope Hicks, one of the president's top aides, had tested positive for the virus. Hicks traveled with the president to the debate in Cleveland this past Tuesday and then to a packed rally in Minnesota on Wednesday. Many now focusing on this Rose Garden ceremony last Saturday for Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett. Several people in attendance confirmed positive, including North Carolina Senator Tom Tillis, Utah Senator Mike Lee, and Notre Dame University President Father John Jenkins, and former White House advisor Kellyanne Conway, who tweeted, my symptoms are mild, light cough, and I'm feeling fine, as well as Chris Christie, who was part of the president's debate prep team. Trump's campaign manager, Bill Stepien, who was with the president at the debate, has also tested positive. There is now concern for Joe Biden, who spent more than 90 minutes on stage with the president, 13 feet apart, but without masks. The 77-year-old former vice president says he and his wife, Jill, have both tested negative for the virus and have wished the first family well. This is not a matter of politics. It's a bracing reminder to all of us that we have to take this virus seriously. It's not going away automatically. Rena Roy, ABC News, Washington. And as we mentioned this evening, the president shared a video message on Twitter from Walter Reed Hospital. I came here, wasn't feeling so well. I feel much better now. We're working hard to get me all the way back. I have to be back because we still have to make America great again. I just want to be so thankful for all of the support I've seen, whether it's on television or reading about it. Uh, I most of all appreciate what's been said by the American people, by almost a bipartisan consensus of American people. It's a beautiful thing to see, and I very much appreciate it, and I won't forget it. 
You're hearing from the president there in the last few minutes. And speaking of support, we saw that here today in Denver. Supporters of the president hit the road to show that they are behind him right now. A caravan of about 200 cars rolled through the Denver Metro flying Trump flags. These shots came from I-25 at the Bellevue exit. We were also given some insight today by the president's doctors as to how he's being treated. Denver 7's Gary Broad breaks down what experimental drugs the president is receiving and what they do. In a briefing, President Trump's doctors saying they gave the president an antibody cocktail as well as an experimental drug called remdesivir. Neither are approved by the FDA, so we're breaking down what these drugs are. At this time, the team and I are extremely happy with the progress the president has made. President Trump remains at Walter Reed Medical Center. We are monitoring him very closely uh, for any evidence of complications from either the coronavirus illness or the therapies that we are prescribing to uh, make him better. Those therapies, a five-day treatment of the antiviral drug remdesivir and a coronavirus antibody cocktail made by the company Regeneron. Essentially, it's like an immune response in a vial. Regeneron's cocktail is currently in phase three of testing, but has not received FDA approval or even emergency use authorization. We could actually knock down the virus levels. Regeneron's president says in recent studies, they have seen some patients' viral levels drop by as much as 99%. The president was able to receive antibodies on Friday through the company's compassionate program. When the treating physician applies and gets authorization from the FDA for this purpose. And when they do, we have a program where we can make it available. Yesterday evening, he received his first dose of IV remdesivir. Remdesivir is an antiviral drug you may be more familiar with. Both UC Health and Denver Health participated in recent studies. We're uh, pleased to have available remdesivir, which has been shown to at least shorten the duration of illness in patients with severe disease. Remdesivir has also not been given FDA approval. The president was able to get the treatment under the emergency use authorization. Others, like Juan Rivera, are given it during a trial, like he did back in April when we spoke to him. You could feel you a little bit that it was getting stronger and stronger. Gary Broad, Denver 7. And we want to remind you, coming up on Friday, Denver 7 is hosting a debate between Senator Cory Gardner and challenger John Hickenlooper. It's in partnership with the Denver Post and Colorado Public Radio. It all kicks off at 5 p.m. right here on Denver 7. This weekend, fire crews in northern Colorado are tackling two major wildfires. First, the Cameron Peak Fire. It's been burning for more than seven weeks and now the third largest on record in our state. Many families are out of their homes this weekend. In fact, the red areas you see on this map show places under evacuation orders. And you can see that covers a very large area here west of Fort Collins. This camera from Deadman Lookout shows just how thick the smoke has been out there. It is tough to even make out the mountains in the background. The Cameron Peak fires burned through more than 125,000 acres so far. But crews have been making progress. At last check, the fire is 38% contained. Meanwhile, the Mullen Fire, which started in Wyoming and spread to Colorado, it is growing rapidly. It grew by more than 8,000 acres overnight. In total, it's burned through an area of more than 136,000 acres, just 6% contained. It is also prompting evacuations in parts of Jackson County and in Larimer County, too, where people are already dealing with the Cameron Peak wildfire. Well, if you were hoping to see Cam Newton go up against Patrick Mahomes tomorrow, it's just not going to happen. The Patriots Chiefs game is being postponed due to positive COVID-19 tests on both teams. And New England quarterback Cam Newton is one of those positive tests. The Kansas City game will be moved to either Monday or Tuesday. The league already rescheduled tomorrow's Titans Steelers game to October 25th due to positive tests on the Titans team. And today's Rapids game is being pushed back due to similar concerns. Two more Rapids players and a staff member tested positive for the coronavirus. They will now play the Portland Timbers on November 4th. Coronavirus case numbers are growing right now in our state. The most recent update shows 657 new cases, and that brings our state's total to more than 72,000. The percentage of tests coming back positive, though, stands at 3.66. The World Health Organization says anything below 5% is a good target for states that choose to reopen.